behavior is just totally unacceptable. Highly unprofessional. They're calling you neurotic. A drama queen. <laughs> I can't count. <laughs> I can't count. How many times must I say it? Money is not my problem, but how to spend it. Some lasagna for me. <laughs> Definitely. Um, I would actually love to direct. That's where I'm headed in my mind right now. I've been on a lot of sets um, all, you know, throughout my almost 20 year career. So that's where I feel that I might be able to bring some, some value. But of course, I'm not just gonna call myself a director. Um, I'm gonna have to go to directing school and really know what it's all about. Um, so that it doesn't become the DP's film with my name on it. I think for the technical aspect, if you want to really understand the, the camera and the way it works and you know aspect ratios and and uh, f stops and things like that, you know, um, I have a photography background. Um, not a lot of people know this. Um, I actually studied photography for about six months with the famous Don Baba. Um, he's an uncle of mine, so I used that resource and it was great. So I already have that kind of eye, so it's not just a whim thing. Wow, it takes a lot. Film is a very sensory type of activity, I think, for me. Um, first, as someone who appreciates film, um, which is how you know we all came to be. Um, and the type of films that I like are films that are dramatic, um, have an element of th thrill. Um, I like psychological dramas. So those are like the, the kind of films that I'm kind of more drawn towards. Yeah. Um, my work isn't done yet. It never was. Um, it just kind of happened that way. It wasn't something that I thought of and said, okay, it's going to be five years, I'm going to take time off. No, life doesn't really happen that way. It just happened and my kids came quickly and I'm happy. Now I'm a mom of two, I'm more settled, but I had to even power through that, you know, to come back to work. And, and that, was, that was tough. It took a lot, of, um, a lot of guts and I think my fans actually... In fact, I should have said my fans first because they never let me go. They would send me messages on my um, website and on Facebook. Where are you? We miss you. And you know, and I was. I think that kind of really touched me. And I was like, wow. So this is really important. You know, like it's not just a hobby. It's you know, I'm actually missed. You know, it made me feel that I made enough of an impact in the industry to still be missed. Um, and it really helped me to make up my mind and say, you know what, I still have work to do. And I found that I'm not the type of woman that's happy just being at home. Um, I'm a creative. I need to be doing something creative. Um, and I'm happy that I've done that and I can show people that it's done, it can be done. As far as you're focused, determined and you have a good support system, which I'm lucky enough to have. How many times must I say it? Money is not my problem, but how to spend it? I think it means different things to different people. I've been fortunate to have won awards and that's a, it's an amazing feeling. It's a feeling of validation. It's a feeling of respect. Like, yes, I have arrived. Well, we have to be very careful because sometimes awards are very political. So it's, you really should have a kind of fluid relationship with it. You have to still know who you are. You, you shouldn't need the awards to validate your work, um, especially when you're around people who you know uh, connoisseurs and won't just tell you that you did a good job if you didn't so we have to be careful because sometimes you can at 
you know, struggle to win awards and then you win the awards and it doesn't do anything for your career. And you have a lot of people who've won Oscars and their careers have just kind of nosedived afterwards. So it's not the be all and end all of the world. It's wonderful to get awards. It's wonderful to get that respect amongst your peers and, you know, in the eyes of the public. But if for any reason you f you're feeling kind of marginalized or whatever, just concentrate on your work and always do better. Someone like Leonardo DiCaprio, who I love, um, and this is another aspect, you know, there's some people who are movie stars and they can never really be appreciated as artists. It's hard, <laughs> you know, they sell, they fill the box office, but artistically, they're just not accepted, you know, um, and I'm sure, I'm sure he'll be going through a lot of emotions right now, I think, because you've probably wanted it and really been like, ha, how can I not have a word? Like, hello, yeah, about time. Thank you very much. But it's the reality of it. Some people might have just seen him say, no, he's too much of a movie star or for whatever reason. So you need to be careful, I would say. <laughs>
Um, but even before her, you know, my parents, my mom especially, she's always been my biggest supporter and um, always pushed me to do whatever I said I wanted to do. She would remind me, she's like, yeah, you said you wanted to do that. Dick. <laughs> you know, so I would say my mom as well. Um, and I think coming from an artistic family background, all of us are artists in different ways. I sing, I dance, my brother dances, my immediate younger brother Samuel, he works in the back now, so you know, he has a tie and all that. And then Stanley, he sings and raps, Cynthia sings, dances, Timony. You know, we all, we, we all grew up in that kind of like the Jackson 5 in our, in our minds. <laughs> but yeah, so I think a combination of all those things and I think also having a belief in oneself, you know, that. God, you couldn't have brought me this far. We'll get somewhere, you know. So I think that too. Yeah. What kind of party planner are you? Your behavior is just totally unacceptable. Highly unprofessional. I think the media has to really understand its power to, I think, to start making great decisions. Um, it's an agenda setter. That's what the media is. I studied mass communication, so I understand it from, on that level. Um, and it has the power to really set the tone and the order of the day. So if it's already skewed towards that, making it difficult for women who have children, I think that's a real you know, testament of how backwards we, we still are in certain ways. And we need to you know, keep up with the times. Um, women are a great and a, a very, very underrated uh, part of the labor force. And I think we need to start changing the way we, the business environment for women who have had children. It's not a sin, it's not a crime. Um, <laughs> and you shouldn't be, your life shouldn't be over because you're a mom. And I think it's a misconception, maybe because of our mothers, the way they, when they were, you know, having us and, um, not working and all that. I think that's where it crept in. And even when I got married, people just assumed that I would not be acting anymore. And no one had ever asked me that, you know. And I was like, why? You know, why? Why are people even saying that? So this is even to my. I, I might, I'm attributing the whole thing to my own life and what I've been through. I've noticed a change, a shift. Almost like you're married. So why do you need to work? <laughs> but I'm still a human being, and I still have goals and i still have things that i have i want to do so our attitudes really have to change and the media has to actually be at the forefront of that because they have you have we have that power to to change that perception because it's a very negative perception it holds women back but nigerian women we don't send as in that's one thing i love like we're so enterprising you know like even our moms you know even when they were at home they were baking and selling cakes and you know doing stuff we've always done stuff so i don't think it's going to change if it doesn't change quickly too bad but women are going to keep on doing what they need to do for their families and it's not going to change it's going to get better and better so media catch up will so we can speed it along Oh yeah, lots, lots of challenges. Um, people had started calling me an ex-actress. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> I didn't work for four, eight, four, five years and I'm an ex-actress now. Um, but yeah, that really stung, Shara. But anyway, it, it propelled me, you know, it made me know that, look, yes, it seems like an uphill task, but I'm gonna, you know, just grind and push ahead. Um, the roles, of course, weren't um, coming like as it was before because the industry had slowed down anyway. It wasn't that Nollywood of that heyday that I was a part of kind of segued into a different animal. Now it's in Asaba, it's based out there and all that. So I had to consider a lot of things. And luckily for me, I got the chance to be in Journey to Self in 2012. That was Ashionye's film. That was actually my real comeback film. Um, first film away from that whole uh, desert. <laughs> but um, when I came back and I did Journey to Self, it did it did pretty well. It it won a few awards. It you know, but it didn't do much for my career personally. But it was a statement to say I am back and I'm you know. So it's been gradual. And since then, Fifty is actually my seventh film since I've been back. Um, because people haven't either seen some of my films or, 
you know they went straight to dvd or they didn't do very well or you know for different reasons um so i want people to realize that it's been a struggle it, it didn't i didn't just it didn't just fall in my lap and I, I say this because i want to encourage people out there and not you know create this misconception that oh what bam she just came back dude no i've been working since 2012 actively to get get back um my career so it's it's challenging and of course you know as a mom of two well at the time i was mom of one my body had changed i was kind of like hmm, what's going on you know um things aren't snapping back like, like they used to so i had to work even harder to make sure that i was in shape and which helps me mentally as well you know to just focus and i've been working i've been working really really hard so it's challenging it's challenging because you leave a certain position and then you come back and you have to fight for it again but it's it's more fun for me now because i have more i have more understanding more of a of yeah understanding really of of the whole business and i'm still learning of course because of social media adapting to all that stuff because i really wasn't a social media person i was totally off so yeah those challenges just trying to keep up with the time but not even just keep up but also be a trendsetter even within that um and i've been lucky i've been blessed really i really have been since since i've been back so it's been all good i never had a plan i kind of did <laughs> but no i didn't i didn't realize that you know sometimes you, you have dreams and it just seems too much like come on what do you who do you think you are but when you have those type of dreams it's it's also nice to hold on to those dreams maybe even if you're cynical about it so i think that's really how it's been for me i'm grateful more than anything to god because honestly i couldn't have done this without him really in the first place having the talent, giving me the opportunity, pushing me, guiding me, making sure that I never I didn't fall into any trouble. You know, it's 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 a spiritual thing. So I don't look at it just, oh hey, Dakari Musakande. No, it's been a gradual progression and um I'm grateful that it, it's not a flash in the pan. It's something that's still growing and my fans are growing with me. I you know I even hear people tell me, well, I, was, I watched you as a kid and I'm like, what? Are you trying to say I'm old? what but that's how long it's been so it's nice it's nice to still be around it's nice it's nice to still be relevant and working and doing really good work as well like 50 and i don't even know what i'm going to do now like i have so many scripts and i'm just looking at them like oh my god you know like after 50 because now the expectation is even higher you know so it's tough. It's not easy. This artist's life is, is very tough, but I love it. I, this is my life. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have it any other way. World domination. Hello. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, pretty much just, you know, take it to the next level. I'm now, and I can turn myself as an international actress because of the exposure um, that I've had and especially with 50 so I'm you know just broadening my horizons and not letting anything stand in my way really um, and just being hopeful and just you know I want to just keep putting out a positive image and a positive you know just vibe because this world is just so crazy and it's it's therapeutic for me because I you know I can enjoy my own life because I know I'm doing my purpose you know I'm walking in my own purpose um, so those are the things I'm looking forward to enjoying my kids watching them grow and being a better mom better wife better person Yeah, I'm expectant. I'm really looking forward to what God has in store for me <laughs> That's a very interesting question um, Yes, 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 I'm putting it out there in the universe. Yes, um, I am um, maybe a little more than that, but start. I'm gonna do baby steps, but definitely we'll be releasing a song this year. That's for certain. Um, it's on my list of accomplishments, hopefully for 2016. 
um, talking to some producers at the moment. So that's why I laughed when, because <laughs> I didn't expect the question. But um, yeah, so it's definitely, because music is actually really who I am. That's the personal side of Dakori. The actor is, you know, it's, it's all, you know, for show in that sense. But um, I think my fans are going to be a bit surprised and, um, and just see a different side of me, I guess, my musical side. Um, I started out as a musician before an actor, so it's been an interesting transition for me because I thought I'd be talking about music now, but hey, that's the way life is. But I'm still definitely going to get back to that for sure. Um, I've been very blessed to be singled out to do that type of work because I think it's um, it's the most validation that I feel in myself when I'm doing those type of work, bringing issue, you know, bringing light to issues that people don't want to talk about. That's something that really gets me going, um, and I'm grateful because I've worked with Amnesty International in the past. I've worked with Oxfam America. Um, for gun violence and can you imagine gun violence now is like at the top of the agenda now in the world especially in America now with the whole gun control issue but so I worked on that and now I'm Action Aids ambassador in Nigeria um, and our campaign really is just for community sponsorship it's really just trying to get money from the people to help communities in the rural areas because people always forget about the rural areas you know we all think about just Lagos you know but the challenges that these people have is just beyond you know and I've actually traveled out there you know to different parts of Nigeria to experience what people are going through they don't have light like basic light the way we're like oh Nepal took light this one they don't have light they're not even connected they don't have roads in this day and age it's not even funny um, so I had to actually go through that to see my, for myself firsthand what I was talking about and all they're asking for is 2,000 Naira per month. If you can just put that aside and say I'm going to work towards building a, a school, building a borehole in this community and the beautiful thing about Action Aid is they send you reports so even when you've put your money towards certain projects and you choose the project, you choose either from governance or um, uh, advocacy, whatever area, women's rights, whatever, you know, interests you, you pick. So you tailor pick it to what is important to you, but that money is going towards something tangible, you know, and I think that's part of the problem. Nigerians are, are very, we're givers. We give beggars on the street. We give, we, we're, we give our mala, we dash. Like for me, I love to dash, you know, because I know that it, it has a way of trickling back down to help um, other people in their lives, you know, your your megad may be in, he may be needing that 500 naira from you that you consider as just dash. So imagine that if you put all that money together and you put it towards building a borehole, something long long lasting and sustainable, it's somewhere you know in the in the world that you probably never go to, but in that feeling that it gives you, you know. So yeah, as you can see, I'm very passionate about it because. We, we, the, the government has failed us and we know. So we can't continue to expect the government to help us. We have to be the help. We have to do it ourselves, you know? So, yeah, I just like giving back. I love it. I love going to orphanages and helping, you know, and doing stuff like that because what's the point of being an, an, uh, a celebrity? Even though I don't really like using that word because I don't consider myself a celebrity. I'm an actor, you know? I'm a, I'm an artist, but this is the world that we live in. It's a celebrity culture. Okay, I get it. But what's the point? Just to put money in your pocket and, you know, floss. It's to help people. It's to shine light. Um, and that's what I'm trying to do. And I'm going to keep on working with anybody who wants to work with me towards making this world slightly, you know, slightly better. And I think because I'm a mom too, I fear the world that I'm going to live my, you know, leave my children to. And if I can actively now start to sow certain seeds that can make life a little easier for them and their generation, then, then I think that's a good thing to do too. LA, without a doubt. <laughs> Los Angeles, I love Los Angeles. I lived there for about six months. You know, I went to, um, to I went for an awards. This was in like 2005, 2006, 2006. 
We went for the award though. After the award, I couldn't go home. I didn't go home. <laughs> I stayed. I said, I just want to stay and just see. You know, it was beautiful. Sunshine, palm trees, the beach. I mean, the lifestyle, everything was really great at first, as is, you know, as is everywhere. Um, and I lived at different spots, you know, and it was amazing. The downtown, you know, we don't realize the power of our media. I'm sorry that I'm just cutting it into, into that, but being in LA, I had this idea. And of course, when I first came on well, Hollywood Boulevard, you know, like the whole, and then after like two months, three months, and I started seeing the seedier side of LA, the downtown area where there are so many drunks and, um, um, people that are on drugs and homeless people pushing their carts. And it's like, is this the same LA, you know? And this is from their films. This is from the way they've portrayed their city as, you know, this beautiful place. And yet there are aspects of that same town that have those ugly sides. And you're like, ah, ah. the guy, one time I was walking around and the guy nearly knocked me over and I'm like, ah. he said, they kill people here on the road with these people. So I'm just like, eh? is this is LA. You know, but anyway, what well, part of why I loved LA is because I saw both sides of it. But it, it's just shining the light on the fact that whatever we show, that's why we have to be very careful of the of this, the aspects of our country and the way we portray ourselves in the media. We have to always put put forward the good side as well as the bad side. The bad side is too it's too skewed towards the bad side, and that's because we're not doing our job. So I digress. But anyway, I love LA. <laughs> I would live there in a heartbeat. Oh God, I've had a few. <laughs> um, oh, I'd have to say within Nigeria. <sighs> I can't even say the place because people will hate me. But it was somewhere within Nigeria. It was the hotel was terrible. The journey there was treacherous. It was just hard. So yeah, but nowhere else. Yeah, to be honest, that's just like the worst place I can think of right now. <laughs> Sorry. Hmm. Travel advice: always hold your passport. Always hold your passport, no matter what, because. Um, when you have your passport, you can, you can do something. When you don't, without, oh yeah. So just always have your passport. Yeah, helps. <laughs> I'm going to be hitting the big 5-0 and with you, the viewers, I'm going to be marking it with style. Hello everyone, my name is Dakori Abelson Akonde and you are watching Pulse TV.